comes in a uh, non-traditional way through through music and how God moves in a mighty way. Chapter 3, <clears throat> beginning with verse 9, says, So the king of Israel went and the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they fetched a, a, a compass of seven days' journey. And there was no water for them to host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, and the Lord had called the three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may, be, that we may inquire the Lord by him? And one of the kings of Israel, the servants, answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which had poured water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, he said, what have I to do with thee? He said, get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, that I would not look toward thee, nor would I see thee. But now bring me a minstrel, and it came to pass when the minstrel played, the music played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches, for thus saith the Lord, You shall not see wind, neither Shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, that they may drink both you, your cattle, and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord, and he will deliver the Moabites also into your hands. A long uh, message and, and a very familiar passage, but it, but it t looks and talks to us tonight just a little bit about how our Lord moves and what he's desiring to do in our lives tonight. The king of Moab had uh, owed some money to the children of Israel. And they had missed a few payments, and unfortunately they had uh, refused to pay. So the king of Israel, he gathered his two allies, the Edomites and Judah, to come join him in attacking uh, the Moabites. The Moabites were long-term enemies of Israel. So it says they go on a journey, a seven-day journey, and they go uh, into, get into the middle of this journey, and they encountered a problem that they had not anticipated. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many times you started something and you got halfway along the project and you realize, uh-oh, I missed this. Or, uh-oh, I didn't calculate this. Or, uh-oh, where did this come from? That uh-oh syndrome where something had uh, happened. But as they started out on this long journey, they realized that they had forgotten, had a great problem. They, re they realized that they had no water. A journey, walking in a desert, seven days, and all of a sudden they realize when they start to get thirsty that there's no water here. That's a big problem. That's not a little problem to, to, to sit there with, but water, uh, because it is so essential to life. Our children need water. Those uh, folks that was walking needed water. The, the animals that they uh, were, were out there with, they needed water. The crops needed water as they uh, would try to, to grow their crops. They, they needed water, and they had gotten themselves into a place where there was no water. Tell you, that's a bad place to get into where uh, we get ourselves into a dry place to where uh, we we in desperate need and our mouth uh, begins to get dry, begins to get parched. And our animals, we look there and they start to, to pant and you, you can tell they need water. All of a sudden, without water, the life begins to, uh, the, be, be, the, the flow of life begins to uh, want to leave. The body begins to get tired and you're not able to, to function uh, as normal. They realize along this journey that they had forgotten to bring water. They'd gotten to that place and they, where they had uh, ran, ran out of water and they couldn't find any. It's a troubling uh, situation and circumstance to have no water at all. And they started to realize that uh, they were in a very serious moment. They, they literally had almost started to a place to where 
they started to panic. We need water. Our, our cattle's going down. Our animals are going down. The, the folks that's on this journey with us that's in the midst of this battle, uh, they, they need water. And we're we in a serious trouble here tonight because there is no water. Can I tell us tonight that uh, in the spirit it's the same way that uh, when we gather ourselves together in a sanctuary, a church service, and we realize that there is no movement of the spirit, the water has left the building. The water is no longer accessible. As we look around, we begin to get very thirsty and dry, and life is extremely dependent on water. And here they are as they realize that they were in a serious moment. They had begun to panic. And Jehoshaphat, the uh, king of Judah, he, he began to inquire, is there not a prophet of the Lord here that he may uh, inquire of the Lord? Is there not somebody that's got a relationship with Jesus that can find some way to get us to this water that we need? Is there not a prophet here that can provide us with direction? Just point me to where the water is. Just point me to uh, the quickest path. Point me to the altar. Point me to where the presence of God is. Point me to where the power is. Point me to where my salvation is. Point me to where the chain breaker is. Point me to where I can get freedom. Point me to where I can have rest. Point me to where I can get some kind of peace. Point me to the place where I can grab some water find himself in this place and they had begun to get very desperate. The Bible begins to tell us that there was a prophet, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, and he was here and he had poured water on the hands of Elijah. He said, and the word of the Lord was with him. So these three kings of Israel, they go down to seek the prophet. And Elisha says, what have I to do with you? He begins to ask them a question. In other words, I don't know any of y'all. I hadn't seen y'all in quite a while. I hadn't seen you in a while. And he, what, what, what Elijah is, is uh, Elisha is saying is that you haven't been to church in a long time. And now, all of a sudden, because you're in trouble, you come. This is what he's saying. Now, this is, this is what the Word is telling us. That you, you, you're coming now because you're thirsty. You're coming now because you're in trouble. But he's saying, I, I hadn't seen you in a long time. And now you come because you're in trouble. And you want to get a word from the Lord. And Elijah said that, he said, if it was not for Jehoshaphat. Now here, here's what I'm going to preach from. If it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, he said, I would not see you. If it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, I would not see you. The thirst and the dry. They're panicked and they realize they're in trouble. They'll do almost anything. They'll hear almost anything. They'll listen to almost anything. They realize that they got to have water. But here is uh, Jehoshaphat. And because they brought him, Elisha said, because of him, he said, you got my attention. And we got to ask ourselves tonight. I did when I began to look at this. What's What's the draw for Jehoshaphat? Why did Elisha, why did the, the, the man of God say, because you brought Jehoshaphat, he said, you got my attention. Because you brought him, and I hadn't seen you in a long time. I, you, you, you've, you've shunned me. You've, I've been drawing you, but yet you shunned me. I, I've been pulling on your heart, but yet uh, you've been shunning me. And because of that, he said, if it was not for Jehoshaphat, he said, I would not see you. I know you're thirsty. I know you're dry. He said, but he said, because of Jehoshaphat, he said, you now have my attention. So what is it about Jehoshaphat? The Bible said he was the king of Judah. He was the king of Judah. Judah itself means what? We all know these biblical stories, but uh, Judah simply means praise. And uh, something started to happen when, when praise showed up in the room. When, when everything, all the chains and the bondages, and, and we were shackled down. We, we didn't know which way to turn. Uh, but all of a sudden, in the midst of where we are, praise starts to show up. Uh, and it's because I see praise, uh, because I saw praise, uh, because somebody's hand went up in the midst of where it seemed because praise showed up in the building he said I see you you got my attention now. You got my attention now. I, I, was, I was sharing just, you know, sometimes I, I think we, we sometimes forget uh, how this thing works today with, with Jesus, but he loves praise. And, uh, and, and Elisha said, because Jehoshaphat, because praise showed up, he said, I'm focused now on you. Wonder why sometimes we, we start our services. It's just basic, 
It's a basic church 101 that we start every service with song. Why? Because we know when praise is there, we got his attention. When praise is there, we got his attention. The preacher don't have all your answers tonight, but I said praise. When it shows up, Elisha said, now you got my attention. What, 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 what do you need? He's starting to focus now. Praise showed up. All of a sudden, he starts to look. The Bible said that when, when he showed up, these three kings... Elisha began to try to push him off. Hadn't seen y'all for quite some time now. But all of a sudden now praise shows up in the room. And because the king of praise is here, he said, I'm going to hear your request. Because praise showed up, he said, we're going to take care. And I'm going to handle and I'm going to hear your praise. He said, we're going to hear your request. Praise showed up. Judah came into the midst of where we was in the middle of everything going wrong. What is that telling us tonight? When trouble comes or when we don't know which way to turn, when it seems like the deck of cards is stacked against you, that when praise shows up, you get his attention. There's something about praise that is special to God. What has captured the prophet's heart and attention in the midst of these three kings? is the one king Jehoshaphat who represents the people of praise, the Judah, king of Judah. He represents those uh, people of praise. There's something powerful and anointing when people come together to praise God. You want to see chains broke? You want to see lives transformed? You want to see demons and devils cast down? Can I tell you tonight that when we began to lift up my, I said when we began to lift up, I said when we began to lift up, when we start to give God praise, chains start to break. And here was Judah. Something got his attention. Something powerful and anointing occurred. Praise and worship, trying to get our hearts ready for worship. We start our services with song. We, we, we begin to, even when we, when we come back up to give the invitation, there's, there's not many uh, services I've ever been to where when we, we go to give an altar call, we don't say, if you'd come to the piano, if you'd come to the music, and we kind of kind of wait for a moment as they get up and they start playing. Why? Because we wait on praise to show up. I said, we wait on praise. That way when he shows up, God said, now you got my attention. He stands up. The Holy Ghost stands up at guard. The power of angels stand up at guard when they see praise. When he steps in the room, it's powerful. I know I tease sometimes with our, with our choir, and I talk to them about praise, and I, I said, listen, we need a, we need a, a shambok. We need shambok praise. And what that is, that's a praise when I don't feel like it, uh, when things might not be going just right, uh, when the music may not sound just right, uh, when it feels like, see, what, they, what, what, what really happens is when we come into a service, the first thing has to break for you is you got to get freedom. And that's what the praise does. Sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes I don't feel like raising my hand. But all I'm looking for tonight is a little bit of freedom because when I start praising him, he said, oh, you got my attention now, boy. What do you need? And then I start making my request known. And he hears. He's inclined to hear you. But we bring that choir up. We, we, don't, we don't want no choir that's singing just some kind of Talent, I think I said it last week. We don't want talent. We're looking for the anointing. We don't want talent. We want somebody God's called and put inside of you a hunger that my God, that you know how to step out on the power of God. Praise so dumb. Elijah, they was thirsty. They started on a journey and they forgot, man, how in the world can you forget the water? Probably got them donkeys loaded down with all kind of food. Got them loaded down with the, I, I just in my mind, if I would, I would have my tents that I could camp out and sleep at night. And got all the preparation made. And all of a sudden in the journey, they said, throw me the canteen. Ain't no water, I forgot it. I forgot the canteen. Can I tell you tonight that the most important, you can go longer 
you can last longer, more days without eating food than you can without water. You see, that's why the devil wants to make you forget your water. That's why he wants to stop the praise. That's why just for you come into church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday, all the problems, all hell wants to break loose. Why? Because it wants to bind you down. It don't want you to have freedom. It wants to stop you. But here's lesson number one for you. When you come into the house of God, just lift your hands, whether you feel it or not, and say, God, I'm here. I come tonight, I walked in here now, God, I'm here today, I'm here this moment. Come on, I'm trying to help you. And I just want to praise you. And when you do that, here come freedom. He said, you got my attention now because you brought Judah in, because you brought praise in. Now I hear what you're saying. God, I need you, Lord. Sometimes, sometimes I think we want to we wanna go on a journey we want to go sometime without our water. Man, that water, sometimes it gets heavy to tote that water. The amount of water that it would take for you to survive seven days, you couldn't tote it yourself. It would be heavy. But you can't go without it. So you got to find a way to get it there. So they would load up them donkeys. They would load up them animals. They'd load up that cattle. And they had everything loaded up on it. That's how we are tonight. Every problem in the world on our shoulder. And we forgot where the water, where the water came from. I said, his name's Jesus, y'all. I said, his name is Jesus. And he desires tonight that when we enter into his house, that we bring in Jehoshaphat praise. That we bring him in. He said, now bring me. Bring me the praisers. Because when the praisers come, the prophets said, listen. Listen, it ain't no wonder that hell fights all the musicians. It's, it's no wonder because if I can stop the praise, if I can cause you to forget your water. I can kill you. If the adversary can stop you from getting your water, he can kill you. If he can stop you spiritually from drinking the water, he can kill that spirit man. I said he can dry him up to where he's nothing. But I come by to tell us tonight that my God, where is the praisers tonight? Where's the praisers? The folk that say, I want to be part of Judah tonight that I may be able to get hold of God. You get hold of him. Because the praisers, the prophet said, I listen. Because you brought Jehoshaphat. He said, because you brought him, I'll listen. I'll listen to you. Verse 15 said, bring me a musician. And Elijah understood that it was the music that helped usher in the presence of of God. Did you know you can start playing any music? Any music. I've seen it. I was watching the news the other day, and they play some kind of music, and them folks sitting up there on their little podcast couches. There's, there's, I'm just trying, I'm trying to help us. There's something about music that moves things. And I want the Holy Ghost to hear tonight that we come to sing praises unto Jesus. I said we came to sing praises unto Jesus. A song that'll be sung 50 years from now. A song that'll be sung 100 years from now should the Lord tarry. But God, we want to hear about Jesus. But that music, boy, it's got its way. But they'll play it and they'll thump it. And it's got its way. But it's music, Elijah. Elijah realized that it was music that would usher in the presence of God. It's the sons. It's the sons, it's the songs, it's the sons and the songs. That as they began to sing them, as the music played, it began to set the stage for the heart to receive the word of God, the music, the anointing, uh, Judah, praise. Uh, it began to open up the heart uh, that every chain could be broken. That it's power. In Judah, the great news is God wants to give us 
the answer. He wants to point us to the water. He wants to point us to where the water's flowing. He wants to give us a word. He, he wants the prophet to understand this. And he said, bring me a musician. It's the musician that opens the door for the anointing to flow in any service. What you say? Give me. So when you, which, which one of y'all coming to the music tonight? Which one of y'all coming? Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. I'm going to move quickly. I want you to start playing some. I'm going to start feeling this. God wants to give us some, some power. And here he brought Judah. He brought Jehoshaphat. He brought him to learn how. He learned how. He learned that. Matter of fact, when I learned, I learned how to play the piano because I would go to a lot of little, little small churches when I first started preaching in the early 90s. And they would have drums and they would have keyboards or, or pianos. But a lot of them didn't have the singers or the musicians. I'd go and they'd have somebody leading the choir that was singing a cappella. Just beating on that old red back hymn. But the Holy Ghost still moved. Because the praiser was in the house. You're dry, you're thirsty, you have no water. You started the journey and you forgot your water. Point me to where the water is. And I learned how to play. I said, Lord, if you'll, if you'll touch these old fingers. I had never played any instrument in my life. I, 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 I don't I just play by ear. I just kind of pick it up and, and I just kind of chord it out and start playing. Because I understood the power and praise in Judah, in Judah, in Judah, in Judah, in Judah for you tonight in this room. You see, when the praise is just right, you see, we got a lot of folks today that you, that there's a lot of deception going on. In other words, we, we allow folks to see what we want them to see in our lives. And yet you're so heavy, you're so burdened, That's why the spirit of suicide is on the rise. That's why drug addiction is on the rise. That's why anxiety is on the rise. Because we're showing you what we want you to see. But Judah's in the house and he's here to break the chain that he can lead you to the wall. You see, because this thing tonight is about freedom. It's about freedom. Take me to the water because I'm thirsty. Elijah said, bring me a musician. And then it happened after the musician played. Something extraordinary happened. The hand of the Lord came upon him and he was able to prophesy and to give a word. But it was silent until the musician played. Until praise came. The musician played and the gift of God on Elijah started to flow like a river of living water. The music played. The anointing fell. And Elisha prophesied. And hear what he said. He's going to do something strange. Now I want you to watch this. Because here... Because there's some of you tonight, it, it's not going to. When we see a ditch full of water, we saw dark clouds come. And then a few minutes after that, we saw rain come because the cloud was so dark yeah, that the water came and it filled the ditch. But on this one, the Lord started dealing with Elisha. And he said, I'm going to do something that's not going to make sense. Go in the valley and dig some ditches. Fill the valley. Fill them with ditches. Dig more, dig more ditches than you ever imagined that can have water to hold it. There will not be any rain, nor will there be any clouds. That's what, the, that's what the prophet said. That's what he said. He said, but I'm going to send water, but not in the traditional way that you used to send. I'm going to send healing, but not the way it's traditional. I'm going to send a miracle, but not the way that you're looking. I'm going to send what you need, but it's not going to come the way you're looking for. I'm talking about somebody, if you just find the water tonight.
I want you to find the water. I want you to find the. It's going to be a non. It's not going to be the way your your mind's got it got it all played out. The traditional way. But something tonight is about to flow in your life. But it's not coming the traditional way. Now watch this here. I call this crazy water. Crazy water. Crazy water is coming, but it's not going to come the way you think it'll come. Not with a dark cloud, not with the wind, not coming and rain out the sky. But I'm going to send enough water that's going to fill up every ditch that you have. You're going to look up in the sky, and you're going to start to see something that only that only you can see. Man, ain't this powerful tonight? You're going to look up and see something. You're going to say, hey, you see? No, I don't see nothing. Hey, you, no, I don't see. Well, I see it. Why? Because it's for you tonight. I, I said it's for you. There's a breakthrough, a miracle coming for you. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. The anointing something so unexplainable that people look at you and they say, you've lost your mind. Man, you crazy. It's crazy water. But the Lord's here tonight to deal with some. I said, he's here tonight to deal with some issues, some, some dilemmas. You started without water. You realize you're thirsty. You're trying to get led to the water. And uh, you go to the, to the man of God. He said, nope, 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 nope. And he said, yeah, because you brought praise. He said, now I'm going to listen to you. He said, you're here tonight. And you've run from this stuff. You've run from it. You've run from it. You've stayed away from it. You've willfully neglected it but he's fixing to lead you to the water tonight I can see I see mine you see it no you no no well I see it you see what's about to happen to you tonight it ain't for everybody to see brother David it's for you to see it ain't for everybody else to see it's for you to see it ain't for everybody else to feel the wind but it's for you to be led to the water crazy crazy water filling our needs performing miracles I had a man one time, he, he went down to, he was, trying to pay, he was going down to pay off the church or trying to figure out how much the church was he owed so he could pay the note, he was, he was going to try to pay the note off. He goes down to the bank, he lays the account number up there and says, hey, I need to, I need to know how much we owe on this on this building he said go we want to pay it off you see when but before he went to the bank so, something started happening praise started happening inside that place the deacon started getting saved all over again the preacher started preaching and the singer started singing and the musicians started playing and, and, the, and, the, and the congregation started worshiping and all of a sudden the, the folks started kind of trickling in a little bit and then there's some things that start somebody started seeing some water I dug a ditch and somehow I don't know where the water came from but it's filling it up and it's just coming it's crazy water So he starts to get really excited. He said, you know, he said, let's go down there and find out how much we owe. We're we going to pay this church off. We're going we gonna to have us a, a note burning, man, because God's doing some mighty things. We dug some ditches, and, and man, boy, this thing's moving, and we want to see this thing paid off so that we can do some mighty things. But Donald, he said, he said when he got there, he went and sat down in the president of the bank's office. And he laid the account number up there and said, can you just, and the pastor so-and-so church, can you tell me, 
how much can we fit in to pay this note off? We're going to try to, you know, it may take us a year or two, but, but we, you know, we, we, we just a little small congregation, but, man, the Lord's moving, and we just want to pay this note. Would you tell me, Mr. President, how much, how much we owe? And he lays a little count number. He said the president kind of turns over to a little small bank, turns over to his computer, and he taps it in a little count. Pulls up. He said, Mr. Brother Pastor, he said, this, this banknote has already been paid in full. He said, the balance on this account, as of two months ago, said balance paid in full, zero. And I just want to give you the paperwork that you can take back and have your little note burning. And then he goes a little farther. The little pastor said, hey, who paid it off? And he said, all I can tell you is it said unnamed. There's an unnamed source. There's an unnamed source. That's how they wanted it known in record. An unnamed source walked in the bank and paid it off. Can I tell you that unnamed source is here tonight? Because there was a man or woman walked in that bank and they didn't want their name recognized, but they was moved on by the Holy Ghost. I said they was moved on because somebody was leading them to the water. And they was moved by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost said, I want you to take your extra income. I want you to go into this bank. I want you to pay. He landed on the heart. He started grabbing the heart and he put them in there. And while there was a man that gave his name unknown, the one who sent him is named Jesus. And he's in this building tonight, in this sanctuary right here tonight, in the middle of how thirsty we are, how much trouble we may need God to get us out of, how many problems we seem to be facing, where it looks like there's no way out. Mr. President, Mr. President, how much, how much do we owe you for Lighthouse for all of us tonight in this building? It's been paid. Ain't that wonderful tonight that it's been paid? That everything, my God, I said everything you need tonight inside this building, everything you need, it has been bought and paid for by the precious blood of the Lamb. Started the journey. Started it without any water. Forgot about it. Forgot about it. When they started getting thirsty, they realized they was in trouble. These Israelite folks that got their deliverance, but it all started when they teamed up with Jehoshaphat. Praise. We can talk about it. We can show you videotape on it. We can go back and watch the great revivals of the 1900s and the, uh, on Azusa Street. We can go back and watch the Pensacola revivals. We can go back and watch the Billy Graham. We can go back and see all of these things. But that water's already gone. That water's already, to me, it's already dried up. I'm looking for water today. I'm thirsty now. I'm living now. I need a breakthrough now. I need God to step in now. I need the Holy Ghost to move now. I need freedom now. I need a breakthrough. My God, I need it now. I need it now. Verse 18, it said that the miracle in our life is a simple thing. He said it's a simple thing in the sight of the Lord. And God gave them water to fill up every ditch. And it didn't rain. 
But the Bible said the water came from somewhere in Edom. It's coming somewhere from that unnamed source, that unnamed source, that power of the Holy Ghost. His name is Jesus, y'all. And he's here tonight to, pr to bring whatever you need. He's here to perform whatever you need. But it's going to take somebody that says, I'm going to not look to the left or the right. But God, I just want to praise. Oh, my God Almighty. I want to say that again. I said it's going to take somebody tonight that you want your water. It's going to take somebody that'll praise. But if something happens to you when you just start raising your hand, the Bible said Moses went down in the little valley. It said that every time that his, his hands would, would drop down, his hands was up, they would win the battle. When his hand dropped, they would start to they would start to lose, and thousands would begin to be slaughtered. There's something about the name above every name. I tell you, it helps sometimes when, when you take a, a, a speech or how to how to deliver messages or sermons of big crowds it tells you to kind of just kind of look across the top of the head don't make eye to look across the top of the head you see the you can kind of see the silhouettes below but just kind of look across the top that's what it teaches you can I tell you today when you just look toward Jesus? I said when you start to look toward Jesus, he said look up, look toward the hills, look up. There's something to that tonight. He said look up toward the hill where your help come from, where your help, where your help, where your help comes from. Look toward the hill. Why don't you stand with me all over the sanctuary tonight, all over the building. All over the building. God supernaturally moved. That note, that bank was paid, that, that, that church was paid off two months before the church even knew it was paid off. I tell me that somebody, somebody had to give them a refund check because they were still making payments, monthly payments. And whether you know it or not tonight, whatever you've been facing, before you came in this building tonight, this is crazy water. God had already crushed your problems. He already crushed them before you got in here. Your problems a few folk that raised their hands and said, I got, I got a problem, I'm battling, I got these going. Before you came in here tonight, he, I'm, I'm, just, I'm only talking to them folk that say, God, I just want to give you some prayer. I just want to pray. I just want to praise you. I'm going to look toward the hill. I'm going to look toward the hill where my help I don't care where the water came from. And I asked that preacher, I said, did it bother you that they didn't tell you? He said, no. He said, I was just so glad it was paid. He said, I, I don't want black down. I just lost. I completely lost. If you'd have told me, I wouldn't even remember who it was. And you here tonight. And you want the same crazy water. crazy water any chains broke I need my life happy again I need my memory to be sharp I'm fighting all of these delusions But God, tonight I come to take the crazy water. And I'm looking to you with praise.
I can almost feel the Holy Ghost trying to take over to serve. Whatever, whatever, hand, whatever hand of praise lifted toward the hills. My, whoo. Boy, there's some freedom in this place. I said, there's some freedom happening in this place. There's some freedom happening in this place. I said, there's some freedom occurring in this place tonight. Did you know when you got the praise on when you walk in the building that the choir can sing to page 333 on that old red back hymn I fly away and the Holy Ghost can move and set you free. They can go to page 56 on the second page at the bottom and they can sing Amazing Grace and whether you like the song or don't like it whether you like how fast or how slow my God can move when the folks come together and begin to praise him ain't no devil in hell it's a real right here no devil in hell can stop the power of God when the God's people come together and begin to lift their hands and their head toward the hill. Oh my God Almighty. Hey. Yes, sir. But this, this how we should be moving tonight. I, I said, this how we should be moving. I'm on my pew. Man, I got to get up there and I got to get me some of that tonight. And you here tonight in this place. And you need the crazy water. Listen, I can show you over and over and over and over and over, not, not just in Scripture, but in real life, where God has done some crazy things. And I've looked at it, and I said, ain't no way. Back in 1996, I was preaching in a little old church, and Greenville, Florida, called Sermons Back. I was, I was preaching in a little Baptist church. I went down on a Sunday morning. The preacher was sick. Didn't show up that morning, so I was up by myself in a little congregation, a little deacons and all the congregation. As I sat there in the middle of that congregation, they said, hey, the preacher said, can you come back tonight? I said, man, I'm, I'm 90 miles from my house, and I can't go home and come back. I'm trying to say this because I want to help somebody. I'm talking about crazy, crazy, crazy water. What you need tonight is crazy, but we got a crazy God that's more than able to do what you need. And it's already done. You just got to come get it. But hear what, he, hear, what, hear what he told me. They said, they said, hey, the preacher, I done preached. And they said, hey, tonight he, the, the, the preacher wants to see you in his office. I said, oh. I'm listening to the name, say Sermon Baptist Church. I'm here speaking in tongues and touching folk, and they're following out the Holy Ghost. Man, son, I must have crossed a little denomination. I'm, I'm going to probably get my hands up, but that's all right because I just won't come back. I'm, I'm good. But as I got in there, the preacher looked me dead in my eyes on Sunday night. And he said, Brother John, he said, the Lord told me to tell you. And I said, man, you lost your mind. You don't even know me. This is the first time I ever seen you. He said, the Lord told me to tell you that you're going to pastor this church. I, oh, no, buddy. 
I didn't say this to him. I'm just smiling. But in my mind, I said, y'all lost. If I can get out of here, I won't come back. I'm gone. Watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm showing you. I'm showing you crazy. I went back that, 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 that Monday. After I got in from work. I went to Brother Donald Barber's. I had a little piece in the sub shop up there. And I was up there answering the phone and doing some things, and the phone rang. He said, hey. Brother John, this is Brother So-and-so Deacon down at Sermon Baptist Church. You remember what Buddy Sadler told you? That was the pastor. Oh, uh, y'all remember? That's so about 10 o'clock this morning. He jacked up his car, climbed up on it to change the tire, was trying to push the tire off, and the car fell, and it smashed him, and it suffocated, died. And I looked up, and I looked toward them hills. I said, that's some crazy water. 11 months later, I was still at that little church every Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Oh, when I could get up on Wednesday night, I was still over there preaching of the gospel. I come to tell you tonight that that same crazy, that same crazy, uh, that same crazy water that was able to fill that ditch uh, has got hold of you tonight uh, and whatever you need. Now you listen to the preacher. If that's you tonight, I need that crazy water. I need my ditches filled. I need, I need, I need, Brother John, I, I need that water that you preach. I need that that you talk about. That's what I need. Walk in to pay off a bank. And I know that the bank is already paid for. Been paid off for 60 days. That's some crazy water. And if that's you tonight, I want you to come around this altar real quickly. Come quickly. Quickly, with your hands up, pray. God, that's me. I need the crazy water. And what crazy means, it means.